Hi, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as Scooter, from the Replant website at replant.ca. And the reason I'm here today is I've been thinking over the summer about some modifications that could be done to a standard tree planting shovel to perhaps make it a bit more effective in certain types of ground. So before I get into that, I wanted to give you a quick history on some of the tree planting tools that have been used over the years. So you can see I've got a bunch of shovels and other tools here. Let's start with this. This is a fire shovel. This probably has never been used on a wide scale for planting. The only reason I include it is because a lot of people, when they think of shovel, they think of a generic item, and this is exactly what you probably envision for use in a garden. Uh, we call it a fire shovel because it's used for firefighting to dig fire breaks and whatnot, but this is just, uh, it's, it's much too wide. This would be used in landscape gardening. Uh, definitely not in planting trees on a commercial scale. So this next tool is a Pulaski, a fire axe, and this has two parts to it. It has the axe on one side, and this piece is called an ADZE, A-D-Z-E. Now, the reason this is important, this Pulaski is never used in tree planting. Uh, it's another fire tool, but if you can imagine, there's another tool called a mattock, M-A-T-T-O-C-K, and there's two types of mattocks. There's pointed mattocks and cutter mattocks. A cutter mattock is very similar to a Pulaski. The only difference, instead of a full-size axe on this side, it's usually a lot narrower blade. The other type, the pointed mattock, instead of the axe on this, this side, it's got, um, it's got a pointed tool. It's very much like a pick. Okay, so those two types of tools, the Maddox, aren't really used in tree planting either. I don't think they ever were widely. But there's a third, there's another type of tool, which is very similar to a Maddox. If you took off the point or the cutter point, and you just had the handle and the adds part, and that was called a hodad, and that was used commonly in Western Canada. If you look at an old video from the 70s, uh, something like the Tree Planters Waltz, you're going to see examples of people using hodads and basically what they did was they took the tool and they, they, they smashed it into the ground, opened a hole that way with the adz part and that's where they planted the tree. Now, Brinkman, Brinkman was using those commonly on the coast and uh, there came a point in the 70s where a couple guys from the northern interior, like Bruce Hawkinson who founded Folklore, and some of the Kiwis from Tawa Enterprises, like Carl and Huey. They decided to try something different. So they got a shovel, which was probably very similar to this, I'm not positive, but it was a shovel that was used to clean the dirt out of tracks on a caterpillar. And so basically they took this long shovel and they cut off part of the blade to make it smaller and lighter. And so they ended up getting a tool that looked more like this, which is kind of the beginning of the modern day tree planting shovel. Now over the years, since the 70s, these blades have gotten shorter and shorter. So this would be kind of called a, a bare root shovel perhaps. And the reason for that is because we used to plant a lot of trees with bare roots up until maybe the mid 90s. And the bare roots had very long roots and so you needed to open a deeper hole to get those roots down straight. But whereas this would be a common shovel length, in the 90s, early 90s, they've gotten shorter and shorter. So now, uh, as I film this in 2013, perhaps this is a more common shovel length. And so you can see that on a couple of tools that I have here beside me. Now, something else that's happened over the years is the shaft lengths have gotten shorter and shorter. And planting was a little bit different in the mid 90s, up, up, up until the mid 90s, because we have to do something called a screef and that's to clear away the debris and the litter from uh, down from the, from the hole before you plant the tree so that you're down to mineral soil. Now, screeping with a shovel was done this way, and so having a long shaft made it easier for shovel screeping. But in the mid-90s, the industry changed to a different type of planting, FH or LFH planting in most areas, and so then you only needed to do a quick boot screef or even plant straight through the uh, through the fermenting layers. So when that happened, the need to shovel screef decreased and therefore the need to have the longer shafts also decreased. Now there's still some advantages to a long shaft. 
because it gives you more leverage when you're trying to open a hole, so it's a little less hard on your muscles as you're planting. But the lighter shovels also have an advantage because they weigh a lot less. And so as you're carrying it around all day, you're burning less calories, picking it up, working against gravity. So you can see here's some different shovels. They've slowly gotten shorter and shorter over time. Now as far as, the, as far as the handles go, there's been a couple different types of handles. This is a D handle, because it looks like a letter D on its side. That's very common. It has been the most common handle type in the industry for decades, and it still is today. For a while, some people used T handles. Same concept, letter T, but those were never very common. And some people use what's called a staff handle. And the advantage to this is with a D handle, if you hit rock, if you hit rock, the shovel stops, your wrist arm wants to keep going, and so it puts some pressure as your wrist bends. So in rocky ground with a staff shovel, when you hit rock, instead of your wrist bending, your hand slides down the shovel, so it's easier on the wrist to have a, uh, a staff shovel, in theory. Having said that, not very many people use staff shovels. Okay, with this particular tool, uh, this blade has had one side trimmed off. This is probably a left-handed planter, so they've left the left kicker on. Uh, they may have gotten rid of this because of weight. They may have gotten rid of this because they work in rooty ground, and sometimes when you're trying to pull it out, it catches on the, the roots catch on the kickers, so it's easier to have that shaved off. But that doesn't make a big difference. So the only other tools here, um, we've got this type of shovel. This is probably never used in tree planting, and I'm not sure why it was in the shovel bin. Um, these two tools here, these are called spears, and so the blade is a lot narrower. This was useful in rocky ground, because when you're trying to kick it in, there's less chance you're going to hit a rock because you're narrower and it'll be easier to work in rocky ground. So here's a staff spear, and here is a spear with a T-handle. And then finally, the last tool, it's called a dibble. Um, it's thin like a spear, but it's rounded instead of a blade. And so basically you kick on that kicker plate, punches a hole into the ground, and then the plug goes into the hole. So here's a D-handle, dibble, and a staff handle nibble. So that basically is the different types of tools that have been used over the years. So let's go to the shop and I'll show you what I've been thinking about to do some modifications to an existing shovel and perhaps make it easier for use in nice looking ground, in easy ground. So this summer I was spending a lot of time thinking about the trend about having shorter and shorter shovels and uh, you know I've seen some foresters using garden trowels to uh, dig up trees and it struck me that maybe maybe planters could use garden trowels in some circumstances if they want to uh, get rid of weight. Now the problem with a garden trowel is that when you're over top working down with it um, you've got two ways of holding it. You could hold it like this which kind of makes sense but when you're up above the trowel, that's, that's not natural, it's not ergonomic for your arm. The other thing that you could do is you could hold it like this, because when you're above that makes sense, but that still, uh, still puts a little bit of a bend on your wrist that I don't think is comfortable. So I thought, well the best thing to do is have a, uh, a garden trowel that has a D-handle on it. But the problem is they don't make those. So I started thinking, I wonder if I could make one of my own. So. What I'm going to do today is show you how to make a modified D-handle garden trowel, which I'm going to I'm going to patent it, and I'm going to call it the D-trowel. But uh, the, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this, um, so you can make one of your own. Feel free to do that, and uh, I don't know. I think it might be useful in certain circumstances. Now, it may not be that useful in any land where you have to shovel screef eventually. Let's say that we put a handle you know, I guess you could sh still sh shovel screef with this, but this is going to be most effective as a second shovel that you only use in land where there's not really any screefing, like trench land or something like that, where the ground's really soft, you want to go fast, and you want something light. So, for tools. 
this trowel I found, uh, I looked at quite a few different trowels and I like this one. Um, I got this from Home Hardware. Part number is 5075-401. The reason I took this one is because it seems very, very sturdy. Uh, it doesn't seem like the blade is likely to bend. It's a tiny bit narrower than I would like to see and a tiny bit more curved than I'd like to see, but I still think this is more effective than most that I've seen out there. The other advantage to this is that this plastic handle, it's round, but it's not tapered as you go up and, you know, it's, it's not thinner up here than, than down here. So that's going to be helpful when we're putting the uh, D handle on, as you'll see in a few minutes. Now I could have I could have possibly figured out a way to take this handle off and uh, just attach the D-handle directly to the metal part of the shovel, but I'm going to use this part. So this trowel, home hardware, $3.49 plus tax, came to $3.90 in BC. The second thing I got was a D-handle, and I got this from IRL Supplies in Prince George. Um, that'll be a little bit tricky if you're trying to make one of these in Toronto uh, because you may have problems finding one of these. You may have to get one shipped from, uh, from IRL or from Bush Pro or from WorkWiser. Um, but I'm sure that uh, any of those companies would do that for you. Now this one cost me $8.45 and because I didn't have to worry about shipping it came to less than nine and a half bucks with taxes. Okay, so that's a pretty good deal. Now, the general concept is that I want to take this, put this in here, and have this little mini shovel, the deed trowel. But the problem is, um, you can see that it's not, this is, this is too narrow compared to the opening for here. So I thought of some different options. You could, you, in a good shop, you could uh, use some piping or some doweling and actually have a sheath that goes over this and that fits in here snugly. But, uh, you know, a lot of people wanting to put one of these together in your basement, you may not have access to the kind of tools or materials to do that. So, I was trying to think what's the fastest, easiest, and most effective way to do it. And, as always, it goes back to duct tape. So, essentially what I'm going to do is, uh, on top of our budget for the trowel and for the handle, you're going to need some duct tape. You may have to buy some if you don't have some on hand, but everyone should carry duct tape in their pocket. Uh, the other thing is I've got a little bit of glue, which I'm going to use to help uh, cement the two together. And, you know, that's going to cost you five or six bucks if you don't have a tube already, but a lot of people have glue in their home. And the last thing I've got is a couple of self-tapping metal screws. And the reason you need self-tapping, it's a special kind of screw which is good for going into metal. And that's going to be important because we're going to put the screw through the plastic of the D-handle, through the plastic of this, and it hopefully will go into the metal to uh, give us a little bit more security. So basically we're fastening these two items together with three things. First, some duct tape, second, some glue, third, some screws. Now, you're probably laughing that I'm using duct tape. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to wrap the duct tape around this handle several wraps just to make it thicker so it's a nice tight fit for this, okay? So I'm not duct taping this to this on the outside like this. We don't need this D-handle yet. We're going to take this and we're going to wrap the handle. Okay, so at this point I've added enough tape around the handle that when I stick this in it's exactly the right thickness to, uh, to slide into there and not wiggle around. So you know, try it out if you've, if you've put too much on, peel a little bit back, rip it off, or if you don't have quite enough so it's, it, you don't want it to be wiggling inside this thing, you want it to be a snug fit. Okay, so now I've added quite a bit of glue. Yeah, perhaps too much. But let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, oh, actually I did a good job there, I think. 
I can see just a little bit of a bead of glue coming out here at the top. Okay, now the other thing is too, I like to have my shovel, if you look at it this way, instead of this being perfectly flat this way with the handle, I like to have it a little bit of a twist this way, just a slight twist, because as I'm planting with my right hand, obviously the natural way for it to be from your body is not, if you're traveling this direction, it's not natural to have the handle that way kind of pointing perfectly. Your body twists it this way a little bit, so I like if my arm's going to be twisted out this way and the handle this way, I want my blade twisted in just a few millimeters down to the left, because I'm right-handed, so it feels like it's more natural. So when you set it down on the counter, what's going to happen is you can see it's not quite flat. It's got a little bit of a tilt that way. But anyway, the, uh, the amount of glue that I put in uh, I guess I got lucky there, and so you can see I've got a slight bead that's squeezed out, but inside there it should be uh, it should be uh, the right amount, and so there should be glue through the inside of the handle, all that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this set for several hours and then uh, we're going to come back and we're going to put some uh, machines, some screws in there, some uh, metal screws, self-tapping screws with a drill. Okay, so now the glue has set in the uh, shovel, the D-trowel, and so what we're going to do is we're going to add two screws into this to uh, just secure it a little bit more. Now this handle came with two screws, metal self-tapping screws. If you're for some reason using your own screws, make sure that they're not too long uh, because you want to make sure that since the two holes for the screws are opposite each other, they're going to hit if you have two long screws. So uh, I'm guessing these are about three quarter inch. So let's put this in the vise and uh, we'll put the screws in. just going to put it like that so you can see a little bit more easily and I'm using the red Robertson bit for these screws so I think it's number three the thing with a drill is if it if it's at high speed that's not good so if you can set the drill to a lower speed that's much smarter for a self-tapping uh, screw otherwise just squeeze on it gently so that you're driving it in slowly also make sure you put some good pressure on it to it and I'd probably put a little dab of glue around the heads of the screws here in a few minutes so that they don't work their way out over the summer. Oh. Okay so the last thing that you should do always put your name on your gear so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write my initials with marker here but you can take it a step further and the way to do that is to either use a soldering gun and melt your initials into the plastic or use a Dremel and engrave them. Uh, the only problem with a soldering gun, of course, this is going to be spewing off some sort of toxic gases, smoke, whatever. So make sure that you don't have your face right above and you're inhaling the, uh, the plastic. This would probably be easier with a proper soldering iron instead of a gun like this. Because the iron, you could hold like a pen. But this seems to be... This seems to be working.
You could also, if you didn't have a soldering gun or a soldering iron or a Dremel, you could probably, uh, if you have a magnifying glass, take this out in the sun and you could burn the, uh, burn the grooves in with the magnifying glass. That seems to be good. Okay, that's all there is to it. So uh, make sure you don't put your soldering iron, soldering gun down on something where it'll catch fire. Let that cool for two or three minutes. I might fill that in with a bit of black marker, but uh, essentially we should be ready. And here we have our completed detrowel. So that's all there is to it. Recommend you always put your names on uh, all of your gear, planting bags, whatever. Anyway, something that you can try at home. Put one of these things together. So remember that I'm not suggesting that this is going to be a replacement for shovels. We're not going to revolutionize the industry that much, but this might be a useful complement to having a shovel. And it's certainly a cheap, you know, 13 and a half, 14 dollars worth of parts, plus some glue and tape. Um, and the good thing with this is it's small and light enough that you can uh, you can always throw it in your back bag if you get to a piece and you find that it's better ground for a full size shovel than you use your shovel. But if you find that you're in some really soft, easy, quick ground, then uh, this might be a way to make a little bit of extra money. This might improve your productivity, hopefully. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check it out, and uh, good luck planting.